high risk. There's a lot of things that go into a specific person's risk for whatever disease, whether it be diabetes, high blood pressure, breast cancer, what we deal with, and that's you know, family history. It's having previous breast biopsies, when they start their period, when they have their first child, drinking, alcohol, smoking, uh, being overweight. There's a whole bunch of things that go into that. So there's a few risk calculators that will calculate a person's individual lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. So the probably most common is the Gale risk calculator. And you can just type that in online and, and plug things in, but probably a better one is going to be the Tyree Cusick uh, breast cancer model. And it's uh, IBIS, the IBIS is what it is online when you look it up, but you can calculate from your breast density, your height, weight, previous biopsies, family history, all these different things to calculate your lifetime risk. The average woman is 11%. And if you're greater than 20% lifetime risk, you then qualify for high risk screening and risk reducing techniques. Yeah, so the high risk patient, again, one of my passions, preventing breast cancer. That, that's one of our goals. The easiest and hardest things are lifestyle modifications. There was a great study looking at patients that exercise a half an hour a day, five days a week. So two and a half hours a week. And exercise is defined as elevating the heart rate above 100 beats a minute. Kind of people say, I go for a walk. I'm like, all right, you walk your dog. Do you stop and talk to the neighbors? Do you stop and smell the roses? And, or are you sweating and your heart's pounding? So uh, exercise, my wife and I's debate is gardening exercise. Well, that we would typically call active lifestyle, which is better than sedentary lifestyle, what we're doing right here. Um, but you wanna be active, but you actually wanna exercise as well. So two and a half hours a week, uh, low animal products. So beef, pork, chicken, all of those will have some hormones. Uh, vegetables are great. And we get those studies from people from Asia. They don't have as much meat more kind of vegetables and rice, lower breast cancer risk. They come to America, one generation of eating our foods, our lifestyle, they have a higher rate back to American uh, breast cancer rate. So you wanna have a good, uh, healthy diet and then maintain the ideal body weight. People that do those three things, exercise, low animal products, maintain the ideal body weight, will cut their risk of breast cancer by 50%. So not five zero, that's a big number. Again, easiest and hardest thing to do because lifestyle modifications are hard. Uh, you also, again, want to not smoke. You want to limit alcohol consumption or not drink alcohol. And it's less than two and a half to five drinks a week. There's some different studies that say different things, but trying to limit alcohol. The next level beyond lifestyle modifications would be medication. So the one medication uh, most people have heard of would be tamoxifen, uh, its cousin raloxifen, and then for women after menopause, a, a drug called exemestane. We won't get into those, but it's just they're blocking your estrogen and they'll lower uh, risk of breast cancer by 50 to 65%, so big numbers. And you take this pill once a day for five years. So lifestyle modification, medications, and then the most drastic thing you can do would be do surgery. Uh, the way we do surgery, we call it a prophylactic mastectomy, so removing the breast, but you still need to get all of that breast tissue out, but you can't get all of it out. So when you do a prophylactic mastectomy, and that's where we're doing more of the nipple sparing and reconstruction for these people that don't have breast cancer, you can reduce their risk of developing breast cancer by about 90, some would say 95% risk reduction. So if they've got a 40% risk, you're taking that down by 90%. So taking it down to about maybe 4%. So it's never zero, but again, dramatically reducing that risk. Anything you want to say about that? Dr. You know, surgery is life changing. So you mm -hmm. want to be for sure to make the decision based on all the information that you have. And, uh, and we are very big on informed consent and your doctor shouldn't be talking to you about all the risks and the, and the benefits of going through the procedure. But you're right. There are a lot of risks. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I said lifestyle modification is the easiest and the hardest. Uh, but yeah, going through surgery, you can have a big risk reduction, but you can also have those risks of infection, bleeding, yeah. loss of an implant or a nipple loss. There's a lot of different things, body image, a lot of things that go into that, but there's different levels and different options for people, depending on what their choice is and what their design is. So when a patient comes to us, whether it's cancer or high risk, if they want to undergo a mastectomy, their options, of course, are a simple mastectomy without reconstruction, meaning they get a mastectomy and they have what we call flat and fabulous. So we you know, even out the tissue contouring. And so they can be a bra prosthesis on clothing. No one can tell that they don't have breast. 
The other option is immediate reconstruction where we do a mastectomy and the plastic surgeon does the reconstruction. And depending on a skin sparing mastectomy, which meaning we leave the skin envelope, remove the breast tissue along with the nipple areola or a nipple sparing mastectomy where we leave the nipple areola and the, and the skin envelope and the plastic surgeon does the reconstruction. Our women also have option of delayed reconstruction where they have the mastectomy now, but get the reconstruction down the road when all the treatment is done. The other thing too is when women are diagnosed with cancer, not always that they need a mastectomy. And I think that's a misconception. And especially women is following the screening mammogram guidelines, which is if you're average risk women, you want to get a screening mammogram once a year, every year, uh, as long as you're in good health up to 75 years of age. And you also want to check yourself or have a self breast awareness where you're looking for masses, lesions, nipple discharge that is bloody or clear or enlarged lymph nodes or pulling of the skin or the nipple. And if you have any of those symptoms, of course, you'd want to talk to your doctor. In terms of the surgical options these women have, they obviously can get a mastectomy, but studies have shown that a lumpectomy or a partial mastectomy where we just remove the cancer and just a little bit of normal tissue around it, and then they get radiation, studies have shown it's the same survival for these women. So they definitely have an option of choosing lesser invasive surgery with a lumpectomy. We also do uh, what's called hidden scar surgery, where we're able to hide the incisions, whether it's around the areola or underneath the arm or in the bra line, where it's a scar is not a reminder for this woman on a daily basis that she's been in you know, a battle, something as bad as a cancer. For women who opts for breast conservation, such as a partial mastectomy or lumpectomy, it's the same thing. I think they definitely have better body image, perhaps, because they still have their breasts, maybe a little smaller, hoping that we can hide the incisions. So it's less of a marker for something that they've gone through. I will also add to that and say, uh, we, we, you want to meet the patient where they are coming from. So we talked about personalized care earlier. I think that's really important. Not everyone wants a mastectomy. Not everyone wants breast conservation. So it's really important to know what the patient wants. We are not just technical surgeons. We also want to treat the patient holistically as a person and sure. help them in whichever way that they need and whatever that they need.